Hello coders, this is Jared with Renaissance Coders, and in this video we are going to change up the way that we are firing our cannon. So right now in order to actually fire our cannon, our player needs to rotate the cannon and increase the firepower before finally pressing the fire button. Now this system works pretty well and allows for some really easy playtesting for our levels, but I want to change this up to make it a little more challenging for the players. Instead of the player manually setting up the firepower, we are actually going to implement a firepower meter that is constantly increasing in decreasing. So this means that the player will have to try and time their firing in order to get the cannonball to their desired location. Okay, so the first thing I'm actually going to do is hide our slider and the fire button for now. So I'm just going to go to my canvas here and I've got the slider and the fire button selected. So I'm just going to hide both of those for now. And we're actually going to be working with images and, but and a new button here. So we're going to right click on our canvas, create a new UI image and we can actually put this anywhere in our scene but I'm actually gonna put it over to the left and down a little bit and I've created a new sprite for this it's actually just a circle sprite that's 512 by 512 should be really easy for you coders to create so just create one and then select it of course it doesn't have to be a circle if you don't want it to be I just think it's easier to get a pretty good looking radial fill on a circle now the next thing we're actually gonna want to change is our image type right now it's set to simple we want to change that to filled so we can just change it to filled with a radial 3 60 for our fill method and we can also change the fill origin if we want to right now it's on the bottom so we can change it to the left for example and if you want to see how that looks you can just look at it like this so this is no fill and then it fills in that direction like that so I actually like filling from the bottom a little bit better so this is no fill whatsoever and this is full fill Okay, so let's go ahead and drop the fill down on that. We're actually going to duplicate this image. And for this image, we're actually gonna change the image type back to simple. And this image is actually gonna act as our background for our fill type. So I'm actually gonna give this a little bit of a darker color to it. So something like that. And let me focus up on this guy, give it a little bit, uh, make it a little easier for you coders to see. Now that we've got our background set up, let's actually click on our original image, move it below this, the copy, and now once we do our fill, we can see it actually filling up here. And I'm actually gonna change the color here to something a little bit brighter. And let's actually go with a red since we are firing our cannon here. So I'm just gonna go with sort of a vibrant red color here. Looks pretty good. Now let's see what that looks like. I kind of like that. Now we're also going to need to create a button as well. So we're just going to click on our canvas here. We're going to create a UI button. And if I zoom out, we can see our button over here. So I'm going to change the uh, source image to the circle as well. We also need to update our height and width to be the same as our original background. So we're going to give it a, a width of 100 and a height of 100. And let's go ahead and make it a child of one of these guys and then just zero it out just so it's in the same position. And now let's actually reduce the width and the height a little bit. So I'm gonna go 75 by 75. Oops, 75, not 57. There we go. And now if I click on my original or my fill image here, let's unchild that first. If I click on my fill image now, I should be able to fill and it'll actually look like there's just a bar filling up instead of the entire background, like that right there. That's what we want. Very cool. So the next thing we want to do is actually change the text for our button. So just click on your button and change this to fire. Of course, we can increase the font size a little bit. Uh, let's actually bold this and let's make it a best fit. I don't know. I don't really like the way the best fit looks there. So that looks pretty good, but we do want to change the color of our button as well. And it's really easy to do this. Just go to your color and I can actually change the color on the button script rather than the image script. So our normal color is white. Of course we can go with, um, we don't want to go with red again because our fill color is actually red. So we can actually go with green here. So if we go like a darker green at first, and then when we highlight, let me get the eyedropper here. We're going to go with a lighter green and then pressed color again, click on the image and go with a slightly lighter green and our disabled can just be a gray let's actually make it a little bit of a darker gray there we won't really disable this but that's okay and now let's actually change that our text color as well because i don't like the way that uh dark looks on that button well i don't know that's not that's not horrible but let's see what white looks like on there yeah i liked it the way it was i like it better that way again this is sort of up to you coders though you know you can change the design any way you want i mean it's really easy to change this sort of stuff up okay so the next thing we actually want to do is set up our constraints course we don't have constraints set up right now so our images can move around and flow however they want so we're definitely going to want to constrain this a little bit here so I'm just going to do a really quick constraint on these guys make sure they're all 
sort of staying in the same place. Okay, that looks pretty good. Make sure our button is constrained. It's not, so we'll have to constrain that as well. So let's go ahead and set that up. Now let's go ahead and press the play button. We're probably gonna run into some errors here, but that's okay. We didn't run into errors, so that's all right. And I don't really like the way that background looks there. You know, it's not very pretty the way that's actually popping up. I don't like the gray. So let's go back out to our scene here and let's change that background color. Now, one thing we can actually do is drop down the opacity. So it gives it more of like a glassy look to it. So we can see how this looks. Again, I'm not really feeling that. We can play with the fill as well to see how it looks with the fill. So I definitely like it the way it looks with the fill. That looks pretty good, kind of Christmassy, but I'm not really feeling that background still. So let's go with a white. So it's just sort of a washed out white with the opacity at about 50%. And that looks a little bit better. Again, we will probably be replacing these with actual sprites rather than just doing you know, a basic image. But for right now, this is fine. Okay, so the next thing we actually wanna do is create a script that will increase and decrease our fill amount over time. So we want it constantly increasing and decreasing. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I'm gonna go down into my scripts folder. I'm gonna right click, create a C-sharp script. And I'm just gonna call this update fill. Now let's go ahead and open it up and get to work. Okay, so we've actually created a script kind of like this in the past in our simple scripting series in Unity 3D. So some of you coders will definitely be familiar with the way we're going to do this. Basically, we're going to create an IEnumerator function or coroutine to continuously increase or decrease our fill. So what I need to do is create a few variables up top first. So I'm just going to create a public image just call it my image. I'm gonna create a public float for my speed and I can just set this to like 2.0 F initially. I'm also gonna need a public float for my wait time. I'm gonna set this to like 5.0 initially. And I'm also gonna create a public bool for repeat. Now, since I'm actually accessing an image here, I do have to add the using unity engine.ui statement here. I'm also going to change my start function to an ienumerator because we are going to be calling ienumerators or our ienumerator function from within the start function. And I can actually get rid of my update function for the script. We won't need it. So inside of my start function, I'm actually going to say while repeat is equal to true, we are going to do something. And the something that we're going to do is actually call a function that we're going to create now. So let's go ahead and do that. So the function we are going to create is going to be a public I enumerator that we can just call, uh, let's call it change fill. And we do want to take in a couple of parameters here. So we're going to take in a float for our start value a float for our end value, and a float for our time. So in order for this to work, we basically want to have a rate of change. So in order to do that, we're gonna create a float i variable and just set it to 0.0f. The next thing we're gonna do is create a float rate variable, and we're gonna set this equal to parentheses 1.0f divided by the time passed in multiplied by our speed. Now what we wanna do is actually check the value of i. So we're gonna say while i is less than one point zero F, then we're going to do something. So what we want to do here is actually increase I. So we're going to say I plus equals time dot delta time multiplied by the rate we created. The next thing we're actually going to do is change the fill amount of our image. And to do that, we can just very simply say my image dot fill amount is equal to a math F dot lerp. And if any of you have done lerps before, you'll know what we need to pass in here. We need to pass in our start position, our end position or float, and we're gonna pass in the value of i here. And finally, we need to actually do a yield return null here. So i enumerator functions do have to return something. And all this lerp is going to do is it's going to change from the starting value to the ending value over time. So up inside of our start function, we actually need to call this change fill function. So we're going to say we want to yield return a change fill. And we're going to pass in zero for our first parameter, 1.0f for our second parameter, and our wait time for our third parameter. And for the first parameter, we can pass in 0.0f. Okay, now Basically what this will do is it will actually automatically fill up our images fill amount, but it will never decrease. So in order to decrease, what we want to do is below this, we're going to yield return a change fill, and we're going to now pass in one as our first value. We're gonna pass in 0.0f as our ending value, and we're gonna pass in our wait time so we know how long it takes. And that's really all we have to do for this script. So let's go ahead and actually save this, go back out to our scene. Oops, looks like I passed in an invalid argument here. Let's check and see what I passed in. Oh, forgot the F here. So definitely add that F, save it. 
I should have noticed that because the numbers weren't the same length. Okay, so that fixed the issue for us. And now all we have to do is go to our fill image and all we have to do in here is type in update fill. We can set repeat e equal to true because we always want it to repeat and then we can just add our image. Now you could do a git component to get the image, but I'm just gonna add it as public because that's a little bit easier. And now let's actually press play and see how this looks in our scene. So as we can see, it is slowly increasing and now it's decreasing. So very cool, and that's that's a little bit slower, um, so we could definitely update our speed here. We could go to 10. Um, it's going to have to complete an iteration before it updates, but now we can see that it is moving much more quickly, and that's probably a little bit too difficult. You know, that, that will end up with a lot of random firepowers. Okay, so that's definitely a little bit too fast, so let's change it down to three. So that seems to be pretty good. I kind of like the way that looks. You know, it makes it a little bit challenging to get the exact firepower you want for like the green target. Um, so this just sort of change up changes up the difficulty. And of course, if we hover, we can see that the button does change color. Once we wire this up, we'll be able to click on it and actually fire our cannon. So now let's go ahead and stop this. Okay, so now that we have sorted that out, we need to create a new fire cannon function for this button. Again, I'm going to leave the current function in the script because it will come in handy for some testing. So like I left my slider and button in here just sort of hidden, I'm actually going to add a new fire cannon function above the old one just in case we need to do some testing. You know, so one thing that this will be really useful for is if you have a longer scene, you definitely want to make sure that the firepower can reach the targets. And that could be really hard to test with this method. So what you would want to do is just drag the slider all the way up and fire it, or you could easily just plug in a hard-coded value into the inspector and test it that way. But I think using the slider will probably be easier for playtesters. So let's go ahead and actually go back out to our projects. We're going to need to open up our Canon controller here. Now, one good thing is that we are already actually pulling in the Unity Engine.UI. We do have to actually add a public image. We can just call this fill image here. And we're adding that because we want to access the fill amount of that image. And now I'm going to just scroll down and above my current fire cannon method, I'm gonna add a new method, public void, and I'm just gonna call this one fire so that we know which is which. And really the only line we have to change here is this first one. So I can actually go ahead and copy my current function and paste it. And now all we actually have to change is this slider dot, dot value. And we can just very easily change this to fill image dot fill amount multiplied. Whoops, make sure you add your T multiplied by our power multiplier. And that's actually the only change that we have to make to this script. You know, so it's very easy to change this up. And I think this actually makes the game a lot better. So let's go ahead and save this now. Go back out to our scene here. Okay, it doesn't look like we have any issues. Very cool. So let's click on our button now. What we actually want to do is on click, we want to add a reference for our cannon here. And we want to call a function from our cannon controller. We're going to call the fire function. And actually on our cannon, we need to click on this and we actually need to add the fill image here as well. So I'm actually going to go ahead and rename these. So I'm going to change the first one to my, let's change it to fill background. And we're going to change the second one to our fill image. Okay, very cool. Now let's click on our cannon again, and we can just very easily drag our fill image into here. Okay, now let's go ahead and actually test this out. So to do that, I can just very easily press play now, and I should be able to just rotate up my cannon. And now I need to find a pretty good firing power. So right there, that might be a little much. It was. <laughs> so this definitely makes it a little more fun. You know, it makes it a little more challenging for the player. Um, and the fill amount is actually being grabbed at that specific frame. So it's not like we have to really worry about, um, you know, getting a really weird value um, because it is going to grab at that very specific frame and actually fire at that firepower. And actually, I was able to hit the green there, so that's pretty cool. Let's actually try again. I don't think I'm going to hit the green again, though. It's, it's actually pretty difficult to hit the green consecutively now, which is good. I, I actually like that. Because previously, all you had to do was set up your values and get your cannon in the right rotation, and you could easily just repeatedly hit the green. That might get it. Nope. Too much. Come on, baby. Mm, close to the yellow that time. So if you are finding this a little difficult though, you could reduce the rate at which this actually fills and that'll make it a little easier on the player. But let's try one more time to hit the green. Nope. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh so close. <laughs> okay. 
That's enough playtesting. Okay, now one thing that I do want to point out is that several times in this video I've actually said that I'm leaving in like the slider and the button and the old function for firing the cannon for some testing. And one thing that we could actually do instead of that is actually have two different prefabs of our cannon and our UI. So right now we actually haven't set up any of this as prefabs, but that's something we're going to do once we have our prototyping completed. But if you don't like the method of just having disabled elements in your cannon or having functions that you're not necessarily using, then you could very easily create a testing cannon controller and have the old way of firing in it and then have the production cannon controller that has the new way of firing in it and then just have basically two versions of the cannon, one for testing and one for production. And that could be another way of managing that. Again, this is sort of a personal preference thing. Okay, coders, that is actually going to do it for this video. I hope you all learned something new. I definitely had a lot of fun creating this script to autofill this button and I think it looks pretty good. We are going to continue up to update this game I definitely want to make it prettier and we're getting down to like the last few pieces of functionality that I want to actually include in this game. In our next video we are actually going to limit the number of shots that the player can take so definitely be sure to watch out for that video and I look forward to seeing all of you coders in that next video as well. Okay coders I hope that you enjoyed that video. We are constantly adding new videos here on YouTube. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It allows us to continue making great content for you coders and if you are feeling extremely generous please check out our Patreon account. Here are a few of our other tutorials just in case you want to keep on learning. If you become a patron of Renaissance Coders, you can get access to our source code and our project files as well. Okay, coders, that's going to do it for this video. As always, thanks for watching.